Good morning. Today is the feast of uh, St. John Vianney, the cure of ours, patron of parish priests, a patron of all priests. So we do for one pastor the entrance antithon. Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. It's beginning the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us one day to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant we pray that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, write all the words I have spoken to you in a book. For thus says the Lord, incurable is your wound, grievous your bruise. There is none to plead your cause, no remedy for your running sore, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek you. I struck you as an enemy would strike, punished you cruelly. Why cry over your wound? Your pain is without relief. Because of your great guilt, your numerous sins, I have done this to you. Thus says the Lord, See, I will restore the tents of Jacob. His dwellings I will pity. City shall be rebuilt upon hill and palace restored as it was. From them will resound songs of praise, the laughter of happy men. I will make them not few, but many. They will not be tiny, for I will glorify them. His son shall be as of old. His assembly before me shall stand firm. I will punish all their oppressors. His leader shall be one of his own, and his rulers shall come from his kin. When I summon him, he shall approach me. How else well should one take the deadly risk of approaching me, says the Lord? You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he, was when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer, the Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. 
The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The children of your servants shall abide and their posterity shall continue in your presence, that the name of the Lord may be declared on Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, when the people gather together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. My brothers and sisters, may our Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands when they eat a meal. And he summoned the crowd and said to them, Hear and understand, it's not what enters one's mouth that defies a man, but one come, what comes out of his mouth that defies one. Then his disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? <laughs> he said in reply, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides, and they are, uh, they are blind guides of the blind. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. The Gospel of the Lord. And so, as I said, today is the feast of St. John Vianney, the cure of ours, the patron of all parish priests, all priests uh, now. It used to be just parish priests, but... Benedict XVI made him the parish, uh, the par uh, patron of all priests. And as we sit there, and you know, I got to be in ours, and his body's there, and I read a book of his sermons, and I was reading the first sermon as I sat under the pulpit where he would preach in ours. And I'm thinking, I'm not strong enough, because here the, the, the very first homily in the book is, those of you who are here because you just have to be, you might as well leave because you're going to hell. And those of you who are here, brother, you might as well just leave because you're going to hell. And I think he said six or seven times, almost everybody there, you're going to hell. And I'm thinking, boy, I'm pretty easy compared to John Vianney. But it, it, it depends where you get him, right? Because I, as I read more about him, when he was a young priest, and one of these things was exactly that, he used to get a homily service. They had him in those days, too. And he would take the service and he'd put his own, you know, stories in there. But it was really someone else's words. You can do it today. People do it all the time. And I thought, well, that's good. Because, and then today in the first reading, if you read the first part of the first reading, you're going to want to cut your wrists, right? It's not really good. I condemned you, I treated you as one, as uh, an enemy would, and why do you even cry? It doesn't matter, it's no good for you anyway. And it's like, whoa. But then you go to the end of the reading, and it's a different view, right? You, I will be your God, and you will be my people. That here, it all depends on what we need. We all grow, and so when you have a child, you treat them one way, and as they grow older, you treat them another. It's all done out of love, and that's got to be important. Today, when you read this, the Feast of St. John Vianney, the, his words in the breviary is the words I've based my whole priesthood on, and I talk about it constantly. St. John Vianney says later in his life, this is the glorious duty of man, that you pray and that you love. And he took his whole priesthood and everything he ever preached, and he said, this is what you got to focus on. you got to be a person of prayer, and you got to be a person of love. So let's hear St. John Vianney speak to us this day. And let's do what he says. If we're going to truly be God's people, we need to be people of prayer, and we need to be people of love. May it you know his love today and forever. Amen. Let us stand and let us give to God these our needs and our petitions. We pray as always for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for all bishops, all priests, all religious women and men, that they would be people of prayer and love, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all world leaders. They would work for peace and for justice, we pray to the Lord. 
pray for the end of the curse of abortion. All abortion clinics will close, and let's pray for anyone who's had an abortion or helps someone have an abortion, that they would know the mercy of God and begin again. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for our service men and women who fight for us. Let us pray for our first responders who keep us safe. Let us pray for our health care workers who keep us healthy, that God would reach out his hand and cover them with the precious blood of Jesus, that they may do his will. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick, that God would heal them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died. Remember all the poor souls in purgatory. Remember all the priests and religious on this anniversary of their death, especially Father Peter Donahue. And we remember at this Mass, Frank Kazarek, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they would all know God's life and love for all eternity in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And now let us add our own intentions, and I'll offer up this Mass for you and for those intentions in your hearts. We pray to the Lord. O oh, Holy Father, help us to truly be your people. Help us to pray and help us to love all the days of our life that we too one day will become your saints. We beg you these things, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God who is our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of St. John Vianney, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Vianney, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. You teach her by his pre words of preaching, and you keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, O Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world. Free us by this your most holy body and blood from all of our sins and from every evil. Jesus, keep us faithful to you and to your teaching. And Jesus, never let any of us be parted from you. May the receiving of your precious body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but in your loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home who cannot receive Jesus physically in the blessed sacrament, yet I'll receive Jesus in your name, but I ask you to make an act of faith and make an act of spiritual communion. Begin by saying, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are God, and I believe that you became a man, and came to the cross and died to take away my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're truly present in the most blessed sacrament. And since I cannot receive you now physically, I beg you to come into my heart spiritually, to come into my heart and take control of my life. Be my Lord and my God and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me your disciple. Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender my life to you as you have surrendered your life for me. And now just close your eyes and ask Jesus to embrace you. Feel Jesus Christ put his arms around you. Put your head on his chest. Listen to his heartbeat. Every time his heart beats, he says, I love you. I love you. Just let Jesus Christ now love you.
Communion Antithon. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed St. John Vianney, that he, we may pers- pers- preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless, keep, and protect you, he who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a blessed day.